So this will be a rather simple lecture. I won't get too technical, otherwise I'll be here for hours and I won't like it any more than you people will. So first I have a confession to make. I am first and foremost a computer programmer. I have been since 1970, I think. So that's my first passion is computer programming. My second passion is, is amateur radio and electronics. Hence I try and apply computers to amateur radio. So that's what my specialties is. Uh, why am I talking about the 317? It's because <coughs> I was handed a Uniden scanner by my brother, surplus to requirements. It, it eats uh, batteries. Sorry, it eats cells. A cell is one of those things, a, a battery is a collection of them. I have a bit of a hobby horse about that. So that this thing eats cells like crazy. So I had to build up a power supply for it. And this is it here, based on the 317, which is actually from a project in Silicon Chip magazine. And it comes complete with the circuit. I actually built it up. And I haven't actually tried it out yet. I intend to modify it because see that tiny trim pot that is very sensitive when you're trying to adjust the voltage because one thing I, I'm trying to do being a software person is, is to write my own driver for this thing. There is a driver provided by Uniden but I absolutely refuse outright to use Windows. I will use anything except Windows. So I've decided to write my own driver. I'm about halfway through it. I know the protocol for it. So that's the so that's the reason basically for talking about the LM317 because I need a power supply to keep that thing running so I can keep on programming it whenever I want to. So everyone clear on that? I know it's a bit complicated. So what I intend to do is to replace that tiny little pot by two large external pots. A coarse voltage control and a fine control. So I can adjust it down to a tenth of a volt at a time. Because, because my controller for that thing can read its, its uh, voltage. And I want to be able to tell the user, hey, you had better change the battery before I switch it off for you. <laughs> That's the sort of thing that this can do. That's the sort of program that I can write. So, we've finished about that. I don't suppose I need to talk about why we need regulators. You know, the source of a nice stable voltage. The traditional plug pack is pretty awful. I have a collection of them here. The traditional diagram of a plug pack looks a bit like this. <laughs> Into your load. I've only shown one diode. Normally it's a bridge rectifier or a full eye but but um, I'm too lazy to, to draw it out properly. Uh, what you would normally have of course is so a got to turn the light on. Turn the light on? Yeah, there's a little switch at the end. Oh, yeah. We don't have to worry about reading the stuff at the top now. How's that? Okay. <laughs> There's some in the bottom of the cupboard, I think, in that drawer yeah. there. Oh. See them. This, yeah, there's, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no,
Now, where was I? Oh yes, uh, yeah, the, uh, the traditional plug pack needs a smoothing capacitor, of course, to smooth it out. Speaking of which, can anyone tell me what's wrong with this plug pack? If you'd like to pass it around, I picked it up at a dual truss and truss itself for, for hardly anything at all. Trash and trash. It's well there. Uh, well, in this case, it's trash. <laughs> Can anyone tell me what's wrong with it? No? No one yet? Once I tell you, it'll be obvious. Let me guess, it has no um, earth on it? No, it's not that. No regulator? It's got no filter cap, I didn't. It has no filter cap. Congratulations, sir. You win a chocky or a, or a lolly as well. So, yeah. The thing is, there is the facility for a filter cap. If you if you look at the that's, PC that's board. All it was. Eh? That's all it was. Yeah, there is a facility for a filter cap, but my guess is some marketing engineer, which with my background is a highly abusive term, <laughs> decided to save a few cents per unit by leaving out the filter cap. It wouldn't have been an engineer, it would have been a marketer. Yes, that's why I call them, um, um, well, that's what they call themselves, marketing engineers. <laughs> but even though there was facility for a, f a filter cap, there's no filter cap in it. He, so he saved a few cents per unit and he probably received a, a pat on the back and a huge bonus at the end of the year. <laughs> oh, I plugged it into a receiver, the most incredible hum you ever heard. 100 hertz hum, Dave? Yeah, I put it onto the crow. If there's time after the lecture, I'll show it to you on the crow. But believe me, that is not how you build a plug pack. So uh, be careful when you buy plug packs. They are sometimes not always rated for what they say. If they say, if they say for example, 9 volts at 1 amp and you're drawing only 200 milliamps, it can easily rise to about 12 volts because they are unregulated. The only regulation is provided by the transformer and the capacitor, which is why I'm about to talk about regulators. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. This has a rectifier, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep, yep, a nice hundred hertz hum and you should have seen it on the crow. <laughs> I, couldn't believe, I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. So with the, the, that in mind, we'll now show some simple regulators before I get on to the 317. The most simplest, of course, is the old, is the old uh, the diode trick. That goes off to the load there. 0.7 or 0.6 volts depends on the diode but I've used that trick quite a few times just use the voltage drop across the diode I've done that a few times the next step up from there of course you can probably guess what it is I'm an old fart I use the old symbol for the center. Yep, that's it. And then you get to pick the voltage <coughs> you want. But again, they aren't the best because they, they are only a nominal voltage. A, f a f five volt center is not always five volts. It can vary according to how much current you're drawing, for example. So are we clear on that? So you can use a plain diode, or you can use a regulator. What am I going to... So, so we'll leave that, and now a brief mention of, of the old 7805. Which I'm sure is well known to everyone here. So 
early. What did I say? 7805. Load in that to ground, load out. That's the simple basic circuit, but what you really want again are filter capacitor on the input in, in case you don't trust the power supply such as the one I have and if you don't trust the power supply built by a user you might want to have a diode in there as well just in case because somebody could easily have put the battery connections back to front or the power supply back to front and so, yeah you know those plug ones we've got the multiple fittings yeah <laughs> Easy to swap one of those over. Mm, yep. So that's this 7805. It it has a negative e equivalent to the 7905, and you've got the 7812 for 12 volts. Blah 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 blah. Yep. I don't think I need to talk all that much more about that because we're all familiar with the 78 series. Yep. Excellent. That was sorted. Just, just a quick question, Dave. What's the overall tolerance on the output of those seven eight things? Uh, I so don't a five volt one. What can it range between? I don't remember offhand, but they aren't the best. No, I know. I was just wondering if you knew. Uh, yeah. Offhand, I. What the input could, voltage? The output, hmm? uh, the output voltage. About a hundred yeah. millivolts. They're, they're, they're pretty tight, provided you don't exceed the input voltage reading. Yeah. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention, apart from that diode, is a reverse di diode. That's in case your load suddenly goes crazy with a huge spike, or you suddenly remove the input and you have a capacitive load on the output. That does not like being reverse biased. So a protective diode on the input to protect that from a power supply and a reverse diode across the regulator to protect it from the load. So be clear on that I hope. That's just basic simple protection. And uh, where's the one I built? Oh yes here it is. That's a 7805 in there. This is the this is the controller for an, for an optical drive, USB in, ATA out. It comes with a, it, it had to have a special power supply, plus 12, plus five. This came free because I did not have the manual or the power supply. I did reverse engineer the power supply, plus five, plus 12. You can't get those, of course. I did not want to use two power supplies. So I just put in a, a 7805. You notice that the filter capacitors are straight across the pins, as is the diode. That was just for convenience, not for any special reason. I haven't had a chance to test it out yet, because I think, because when I bought the 7805 from JCAR and plugged it in, it wasn't working. I checked the 5 volt rail, it was 6 volts. I had a closer look at the 7805, it was a 7806. I did not know that such things existed yep. until then. So I went to J Car and yeah, so I went to J Car and complained. They, they disclaimed all knowledge that I must have bought a 7806. They said they would not place a 7806 into a 7805 parts bin and I did not have the receipt to prove it. So you might want to be careful. If you buy a 7805 for example, make sure that it is and not a 7806 because that 6 looks very much like a 5. <laughs> Check it first. I've got a couple of 15s when I meant to buy 12s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they look pretty much the same too, don't they? So you really want to check those regulators before using them. The tolerance on a 5 volt one is 4.75 to 5.25. <coughs> that rings a bell. 
Yeah. Mm. Oh, one thing more about this strange thing. Even though it uses a six pin mini din, one hole has been blanked off. Meaning that you have to use a special mini din plug. Instead, I bought an ordinary six pin plug and let's say that it, that it took a trip to the dentist. <laughs> so now it fits perfectly. I, I have yet to try that because I've got heaps of other things to do. You probably pay ten times more for one that's missing a pen. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Those um, plugs aren't cheap, full stop. <laughs> yeah, but it was. You get one that's specialised, yeah, they. Yeah, well, I tried to find a, a five pin, but I oh, couldn't find one. Like a DB13 or DB23. But, but it's. It has the outline of a six pin with one pin removed. <laughs> so, yep, that, that had a trip to the dentist. I've got a few odd ones at home. <laughs> right. oh, the actual socket hole was blocked off, was it? Sorry? The actual socket <coughs> hole was blocked off, it wasn't just the paper. You can have a. Or have a look, see for yourself. It's not just blocked off, it just ain't there. <laughs> they, they must have used a custom socket <laughs> and a custom plug. Fortunately, it had the same outline. So being an amateur, of course, I worked around it. Repurposing. Yeah, repurposed. Oh, one thing more before we move on. I have seen various ugly things Done. What I do? Oh, my blue pen again. I keep losing my pens. Ah, here it is. Yeah, I've seen some pretty ugly things done by putting something in there before it goes down to ground. Sometimes a couple of diodes to lift the output voltage up, or sometimes it. you turn it into a variable uh, regulator. The 78 series is not designed to be variable. It really is designed for that to go straight to ground. Okay, so this is the reason why we have proper variable regulators. That is a fixed regulator. It will work as a variable, but it's too unstable and the output voltage varies with the current you draw, etc., etc. So now, now let's talk about the. That's enough of that. Oh, one more thing about the 7805. I almost forgot. This is a cute little trick. One that I taught all by myself and used years ago. And just what does that do? Oh, sorry, that so, sorry, I did, did that wrong. You have to pardon me, I have a short term memory that goes off to your load. What does that do? Very good. Why? Why is it a current? Why does it become a current it regulator? That's what you're asking. Really. Hmm? You get the voltage drop across the output resistor. Yep, you got five volts across that. Constant current through that. That current has to go somewhere into the load. I've tried that a few times. It works, but not too well. It's crude, but it works. So it's putting a, a load resistor across a. Uh, resistor across the wood capacitor. Uh, keeps a, a, a current. If you've got a, a, an RC filter hmm. and you put a, a resistor across your capacitor, it keeps your coil and better regulation. Keeps your coil uh, yeah. plucked up. Yeah. Okay. Now we get on to the real meat of the subject, as it were. The three one seven. The traditional arrangement of the 317 is this which 
to all the usual bunks. Just call it a 317 for shorthand. Input, output, and that is your reference. You don't take that to ground. You, take, you regulate the output by playing with the reference pin. Okay, and uh, the way that works is between the output and that is 1.25 volts, more or less. I've seen it quoted as 1.20, I've seen it quoted as 1.30, but you can take it pretty close to 1.25. So, with with that in mind, Just with the reference open circuit, uh, that that's with the load. Sorry, that's with the load between the reference and and the output. You don't ground it. It sounds strange, but your load consider that as a box. It looks like that. And now here's where the f fun comes in. Instead of uh, taking it straight there, if I can just read my notes so I have a poor short-term memory. Ah oh, yes, I'll have to draw straight from this I'm afraid. Uh, instead of that it looks more like this. That's the basic 317 circuit but the way it really looks like in practice is more like this input output goes off to your load. The way that works, 1.25 volts across that. You now have a fixed current th 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 through that resistor. It's got nowhere else to go except through that variable resistor. And so you've got the 1.25 volts from there plus the current passing through there the peers are there. So, you understand that? It's, it really is quite simple in theory. You well, need to ground the load as well. Oh yeah, of course, that's... I'm just, I'm playing the oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you need to ground the load. Of course you do. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, just, just a fixed benefit, I'll ground the load. <laughs> you can take it as a given that, unless I say otherwise, no. No, the choice of that resistor is quite interesting. The circuits I've seen vary between 100 to 200 ohms. I'm not quite sure why, but uh, that's, those are the circuits I've seen. It's most convenient, really, really, really convenient, if you pick 120 ohms. Can you see why? 1.25 volts, 120 ohms. You have a beautiful 10 milliamps, which makes your ohms or calculations quite easy to work out. But you can use any resistor you like there. It's usually between 100 and 200, but 120 is the most common because it makes Ohm's law quite easy to work out. <laughs> what was that? Sorry. Oh. <laughs> okay. Ah, okay. Uh, the standing current at the 317 can be ignored. It's only about a hundred microamps. It can be ignored. You don't have to include the standing current. 
in your calculation unless you have a really low output for voltage. So, oh, and once again, uh, I needn't mention it, but I will anyway. Protect the damn thing because they don't like being reverse biased either. I did see the results of one being reverse biased and the results weren't pretty. So that's what I'm up to so far. Right. The actual calculation for the output for voltage is VF times 1.25 plus in this case no, God damn it. My memory's playing up again. It's your VF 1.25 1 plus RF over RV where I'm calling that RF the fixed resistor that one RV the variable resistor or you can simplify things because your reference voltage is the same it's, it's just 1.25 if you're using 10 milliamps uh, plus 0.01 times uh, 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 what did they call it? Oh well that's just using 10 milliamps really s simplifies it as you can see so <coughs> with all that in mind let's start designing our own power supply sh sh shall we the way that I've designed mine which is right there that came from a JCAR circuit which I tend to modify so we shall now construct ourselves a, a power supply based on the 317 and it looks a little bit like this we'll start off with the obvious things 317 going out there that's the that's the basic one that can be variable or fixed it's up to you there's a few things wrong with that circuit I've already pointed them out previously. Can anyone tell me what they are? No protection diode going bad. That's the first thing. No hang on, hang on. The first thing wrong is you need a protection diode. What, what was that other one? Capacitors. Capacitors. Oh, it is a different colour pen for that. Capacitor on the input, one on the output. That improves the stability of the 317 and also against any any sudden spikes from the load. But the 317 likes to see a capacitor on the output because it improves its stability and its regulation. So let's keep on. What um, value of capacitor would you put there? Uh, that would be about a hundred microfarads. That about ten microfarads. It's those are the usual values you see. I've seen some strange values here, like ten thousand. They must have a strange power supply. Is all, is all I can say. <laughs> Stays on for an hour after you turn it off, does it? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. can anyone think of any other improvements? Yeah. Lady, lady supplies. 
Sorry? Earth return to the power supply? You can take that as a <laughs> given. Something which often isn't mentioned is parasitic um, stoppers, a capacitor from the input to the to the Reference. variable and one from the output back to the variable to stop um, VHF parasitics. The one that I've seen quite often is a small ceramic capacitor. Yeah, exactly. Usually back point mm. oh 0.01. Yep. So thanks for bringing that up because I completely forgot about it. But yes, you've got two capacitors in parallel. If, if you know your electronics theory, there will be stuff or difference between 100 microfarads and 0 0.01. In practice, it makes a hell of a difference. At DC frequencies, it won't even see that. At ACE, oh, at, D, at low frequencies, it won't see that. It'll see that. At high frequencies, that tends to look more like a, a resistor, but starts to see that instead. So, yeah, yeah. So, so you don't use your traditional formula of adding up their capacitances because it won't work in in this case. What they teach you in theory, in this case, is completely wrong because they serve completely different purposes. So there's just one more thing to do. I don't suppose if you're f familiar with this, David. There's no diode on the input to the LM317. Correct. And I'd also recommend using glue resistors if there's a mm -hmm. large capacitor. You, you are correct. And sorry? Bleeder and resistors. Bleeder resistors on the capacitors if they're a large value. Yes. You only need a bleeder resistor if you're using an, RC, uh, an LC yeah. filter setup. Yeah. Because the, the bleeder resistor actually keeps a live current travelling through your coil, which aids in regulation. Mm. That's mm. all it's for. And usually you use around. Yeah. Around uh, you, you calculate your resistor value, so it's around five percent of your total power. Yeah. So, any questions before I move on? No one. Good. There's only a c couple more improvements to make if you're familiar with the three one seven. voltage controller. No, not that. <laughs> yeah. What it really likes to have is a bypass capacitor uh, f uh, from, from the reference of about uh, t t 10 to 100. That helps stabilize it. And because of that capacitor, what else is required? I've already told you once. Another diode. Another diode. <clears throat> You need to make sure that that capacitor is is discharged into your load, because if you because if you suddenly remove that, you have a nice charged capacitor here that then suddenly becomes reverse biased again, and they don't like being reverse biased. Instead, that capacitor discharges into the load and, and things then become nice and safe. I'll be clear on that. If you have any questions, here's the time to ask them. No. What's your maximum current on that? All right, the, okay, the, all right, I was about to just come to that. The specifications, the output voltage is between 1.25 volts and 37 volts which is quite considerable. Yeah, the, the, the voltage difference, i.e. input and output, it can be anywhere between 3 volts and 40 volts, which means it needs at least 3 volts on the input. And the device dissipation maximum? Uh, just about, I'll come to that in a moment. The maximum current you can pass through it is 1.5 amps. 
Can you put by, bypass transistors on a 317 like you can a 7 eighths unit? To get oh. more current? Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because, I've never yep. done it with a 317, that's all. Don't need time. Oh, well, there's no reason why you can't. You have a fixed output there. You said so. And if you want, you can just feed that into a bank of transistors. There's no reason why you can't. It, 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 it has a nice stable input source. The transistors just draw extra current from the power rail and bang, you now have a high current power supply, all nicely regulated. Uh, without a heat sink, it will dissipate almost one watt, which is pretty impressive. Without a heat sink, it will dissipate one watt on a hot day inside a box. <laughs> pretty, pretty impressive. It has thermal shutdown. If it thinks it's getting a little bit too hot inside, it will switch itself off. Unlike the 7 8 series, which would just melt down instead. <laughs> that would just switch off, the 7 8 would just. Bleep. That's just the, um, the, there is a dropout across there, same as across a diode. That's, that's, the, that's at least 1.5 1, 1 volts plus the voltage drop across the diode, which is 0 0.7, 0 0.6, depends on the diode. That's just the traditional thing to watch out for. Like on a diode itself, you've got the voltage drop across it itself. Now we come to what are the most interesting bits. To many of those who remember the series Lost in Space, this is this is the bit I call Danger Will Robinson. There are a few things to be careful of. You've got your 317 <coughs> with its three legs and a tab on the top. Compare that with the 78 and its three legs and its tab. The, the pins are on the, on the 78 in common out. And, and the tab is connected to the common. So providing you're not playing city buggers with that by putting something in series, that tab is just connected to the common, which means you can attach the 7 8 straight to a heatsink without um, any problems whatsoever. The only snag is with the 317, it you got in, sorry, completely wrong again. Call it brain fade. I am 65 after all. Yeah, I know. Besides, I've got the two diagrams back to front. That's your adjust pin. That's your out pin. And that's your in pin. The, the pin out between the 317 and the 78 are completely d different. Not only because they serve different functions, adjust versus common, but the input and the output have changed around. You cannot swap one for the other. <laughs> it won't work. 79 series have also got a problem you can't... Mm. Correct. Yeah, correct. What else? Now, the problem on the 317 is that the, uh, the tab is actually on the output. If, it, if you're going to heat sink it, you must insulate that tab. It, as I said, it will, it will dissipate a watt without a heat sink 
under under usual conditions but, but if you are going to heat sink it insulate the damn thing <laughs> otherwise you'd be short circuiting its output yeah yeah because the, because the because the tab on the 317 is live unlike on the 7-8 where it's basically grounded so be careful if you're designing a circuit using the 317 insulate that tab if you're going to heat sink it oh and again try not to reverse uh, bias it it doesn't like it either uh, those the the advantages I used to have written down here uh, the the dropout voltage is much less than the seven eight the standby current is much less than the seven eight all in all it's a much better chip to use only only one problem it costs about twice as much big deal I passed them at, at J car the LM is about two dollars or so the 317 is about four dollars or so it costs more because it's doing a lot more it's designed to be a regulator not a fixed supply uh, so that almost wraps up my talk I'd like to acknowledge as my sources of information National, S National Semiconductor that's the data sheet there it's almost readable provide some sample circuits uh, switching regulator precision current limiter electronic shutdown 30 volt power supply with heaps of extra components because uh, this is a commercial mob that they like to overdo things whereas the circuits you see in places like silicon chip are really simple you can adjust um, you can have a a chain of 317s all controlled from the same available resistor and adjust them all at the same time so you can do all sorts of interesting things uh, uh, there's a circuit here for a 4 amp switching regulator with overload protection rather complex you've got a 12 volt uh, battery charger with all sorts of complex things in there I don't know why they need them but they are a commercial mob and of all things an AC voltage regulator I'm not quite sure how that works so I haven't really studied it what's the tap you regulating AC? Uh, it's, yes it is it's got two LM317 sort of cross wired 12 volts peak to peak input 6 volts peak to peak output you can inspect this sheet at any time after uh, <laughs> funny you should ask that uh, the input is a sine wave <laughs> it sounds like they're using two DC regulators to switch yes, to yeah. get the AC <laughs> <laughs> the output looks what? like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's regulated. <laughs> it isn't a sine wave anymore. What sort of noise would that put through your radio? <laughs> I would not try it. <laughs> There'd be far too many harmonics. <laughs> so, there's a nice little conclusion here in, in, in the application notes. <coughs> Conclusions. A new IC power regulator has been de developed which is significantly more versatile than older devices.
to which I assume they mean the 7.8 series, which of course is their competitor. The output voltage is adjustable in addition to improved regulation. Well, in, in, <coughs> it's got better regulation. Reliability is increased two ways. It's got internal overload protection circuitry and uh, if you short circuit it, it won't care. If it gets too hot, it'll just shut down. And, it, and, and they claim that every device is 100% burned in under short circuit conditions at time of manufacturer. So how's that? Whether you believe that or not, I don't so know. In other words, if you burn it out, you've done something really bad. You've done something really wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the standard uh, 317 comes in the usual uh, TO220, which you can see there. You can also get one in a TO3 uh, package, which is the LM117. So, uh, something like that here. So that just about concludes Evelyn. So as I said, I would like to acknowledge the National Semiconductor for the application notes, silicon chip, the article from May 2007. That's the power supply I built up there. And another silicon chip article from May 1992, which is a which is a fixed voltage regulator, which is designed to drive your Sony Walkman, for example, because it eats uh, uh, batteries as well. Cells, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I use the term battery because if I say cells, people might think I'm talking about prison cells. <laughs> battery of cells, which is how they got their name. Sure, he's not talking about selling it, Tony. There will also be a nice cell. There is true, yes, there is. I'm being in a cell. <laughs> And I would like to acknowledge uh, Wikipedia, which has a very good article on, on the LM317. It has the specifications for it. It shows you what it, what it looks like. It shows you a sample circuit as a voltage regulator. It shows a sample circuit as a current regulator. And it compares it with the 78 series. And it, it does come out real good. That pretty well concludes the lecture, short and sweet. Are there any questions?